forget about letting Labour in. Because what the Tories will be like this now watching it. Oh, God, she said it. Yes, I have said it. Because you're that bad, you're that bad at government that even if there is a coalition with the SNP and Labour, it's your fault. For the wrong to rule, the good must just stand idly by. Hello. Today, I am joined by one of the vast majority of women who don't have penises, June Slater. She is a northern powerhouse and believes in very dangerous things like bodily autonomy and freedom of speech. Um, for those of you that don't know June, I'm going to ask her to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about ourselves. Hi, June. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you, Lawrence. Very well today. And thanks for clarifying the fact. I hope Keir Starmer's watching this because I haven't got a penis. To be fair to Keir, I think he's got a bit mixed up. I don't think it's anything to do with the cervix. I think and he's getting it mixed up with that very popular Honda model back in the 80s that was easy to park. A lot of women had that one, didn't they? The Honda Civic. Um, yeah, I'm a blogger from Facebook. I'm not actually, I'm a retired businesswoman that can't spell very well and makes a lot of typos, but somehow managed to attract 10.9 million people to my page last month and 10 million the month before, and 7 million the month before that, and a 10 million audience at Christmas. So June's site is, June's Facebook page is called UK Politics Uncovered. It's got nearly 100,000 followers, and she has a reach of sort of 10 million per month, but that's going down a bit, down uh, owing to a bit of censorship. Can you tell us a bit about that, June? Yeah, uh, Facebook have put me on a restriction for 90 days, where my page comes at the last in your news feed. So if you're waiting for my page to come up with what I've posted, that day I'll be right at the bottom of everything else you see. So it, it probably limits the reach. Um, my reach last month was 10.9 million, and it was 10 million the month before, and 7 million the month before that. Uh, this last month, since the restriction, it's down to 3 million. So it does have a, a decided effect. Um, also, censorship that you have to go through because my page was pro-Trump um, for six months. Um, they just literally cut my reach in half until the election was over and then it bounced back up again automatically. So whilst it's really important that we talk about these matters that we're not allowed to talk about, unfortunately, when you're someone like me who's relying on a third party platform, I'm not GB News, I'm not running my own channel, I have to work within the limits or I'd just get cancelled completely. I mean, if they can take down a sitting president, they can take down a blogger from Lancashire. Um, but I plod on every day. I post prolifically and as well as my UK Politics Uncovered page, I, I blog on my personal page because people just keep turning up following me there even though they can't comment. So there's another 50 odd thousand, 54,000 people follow me there because I've built up a reputation of being straightforward, honest, and a bit funny. Um, so the thing is, people are not informed. Watching the news is not informing you. It's guiding your thought process. So we need to be able to access information that puts everything on the table so that people can make their own mind up. And that hasn't been done, not with anything to do with lockdowns or the rollout or even free speech of any description, even the elections, we have been stifled at every junction. And why do you think that, what, what, why do you think that is? Is it, is it because uh, bad ideas have to censor good ideas in order for the bad idea to get through? Or do you think it's, it's, um, it's a sort of, it's an accident and people, people are just censoring because the vast proportion of tech platforms are very, very left-leaning? Or do you think it, it genuinely is these people just hate freedom of speech? They hate talking, having a reasoned discussion about lockdown. They hate talking about the rollout and all of that stuff. Is it because they know that they're wrong or is it because they just, it's, it's an accident and we're wrong? I don't think it's an accident. Definitely not an accident. Um, I think there's a, a general sway towards the left. I think it's a, the, what people won't realise, it's the introduction. This is the fledgling stage of introducing communism to Western societies. And certain countries are fully blown into it. I'd say that New Zealand and Canada 
are basically lost. Um, Justin Trudeau, you can watch the video, openly admits that he admires China in the way that their totalitarianism was able to implement severe draconian laws and lockdowns. Um, and then, you know, we have Jeremy Hunt, who fancies himself as our leader. Jeremy Hunt tried to pass his wife off, you know, in a newspaper article as Japanese. She's actually Chinese and she works for a Chinese state TV channel. Um, Jeremy Hunt in 2015 went across to China to lobby to have the, the Chinese channel broadcast in this country so that his wife could introduce it. Basically, my opinion, the channel whitewashes any human rights problems. It makes it makes China look like a nice cuddly bear with, you know, excellent native dancing and um, unusual things going on. But I've seen videos of the quarantine camps and I don't really want to live in a small um, porter cabin with a bucket to do my ablutions in and see my family when they deem I'm not testing positive. That's not how I want to live. I don't, don't want to see the people living like that because I think what we've lost here, the government have jumped in our lives like basically an unwanted cheesy salesman sitting down with you for tea. Um, they're telling us how to think, how to wash your hands, um, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, segregating society, keeping people away from loved ones will never work. And I will never ever forget Matt Hancock. Um, I don't care what he's got to say on any other topics. It'll be rubbish because I watched him the other day in a podcast and he repeated all the same management speak he used for Brexit, all the same management speak he used for the vaccine passport. And he just rolled it over into digital currency. He's winging it. The man's winging it. And these, the government are so um, starved of real talent because the ones that could run the country are kept safely on the back benches, that they actually think they can wheel this character out again after when it was his watch, when all the disastrous things happened. Now, I won't forget this. The reason I won't forget this is I haven't been affected personally. I have a big house with a big garden. I was able to get through a lockdown, no problem. So let's just get that straight. I don't need to blog, I don't want to be a TV presenter, I don't want to be a politician, and I certainly do not want to be a stand-up comedian. I'm 64, I'm happy doing what I'm doing, but I will not sit back whilst people, like our own government and politicians from both sides of the house, ignore our needs. So when you get a message from someone, I'm a blogger, bearing in mind, I'm nobody special. So when a woman contacts me desperately saying, can you help, June? My daughter's just been diagnosed with breast cancer and I'm really worried because she's got five kids and they won't begin treatment because they've locked down. Um, I thought, wow, five kids, that's a lot. And she said, yes, well, she's got three from my other daughter because she died from breast cancer. This woman has been left with her only outlet for assistance, a blogger. Now, we got help and she had to go out in the area to receive help. Ironically, what I'm about to say turns out to be a good, a good ending. She did manage to get treatment out of the area because of persistence from her family. I got them all to write emails individually. And she managed to have both breasts off and get some form of treatment. That's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is people being left to go blind unnecessarily. They're just waiting for cataract operations. Now, when that happens to an 85 year old whose daughter contacts me from Australia because she can't get home to help her parents, they're in sheltered accommodation. He's the carer for his wife with dementia. And because his sight's going, his cataract operation was that week. Um, he can't make hot food because he's been burning himself. So what they decide is to take his wife of 64 years into a home, 64 or 62 years into a home, which was a, cr a crushing blow for him. His friend, his neighbour, stood outside of his ground floor flat to tell him which clothes he was getting out of his own wardrobe because he couldn't see. So he didn't make a fool of himself with his clothing. And then eventually he too was taken into care and they didn't even put him in the same home. That's how that marriage ended. And that should never have happened to one single household. Our MPs got paid 7,000 pounds extra during lockdown. 
what were they doing? What were they doing? Because they weren't answering emails and they weren't answering phone calls and they weren't going out into the surgeries. So what were you doing? I'd like to remind Parliament that you're there to represent, represent us from both sides of the House. It's our sovereignty. We've gifted to you to represent us. It's not you know better than us. Because clearly the shambles you've created with its economic impact is not knowing better than us, is it? Because we knew this would happen after furlough. We could see the writing on the wall, all those ordinary people. And yet politicians are more interested in grandstanding in the London bubble than they are in taking care of their constituents. We know that they're so keen they're mm -hmm. so keen to they're so keen at the moment to just move on from it all. And and I don't understand why why people want to, why they're like, we'll move on from it. I saw this morning that the NHS waiting lists are vastly underreported. They're much, much bigger than the NHS said they were. And you've just given a classic example of a complete negligence towards people that have been paying taxes their entire life so that they're looked after properly and people just want to move on. And I, 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 I'm shocked by that. I'm shocked by, I'm also shocked by the behaviour of our politicians during it, including the Prime Minister with his um, behaviour having implemented these horrible rules to then totally break them. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a travesty on what happened to the people in this country. So you're, you're essentially, what you're saying is the reason why you do what you do is because you, it, you don't like the injustice and it bothers you. And it's the same with me. It just bothers me hugely. Well, it, it's, it's, when I say it's what brought us together, it's what brought us together because we can see what's unfolding. You risk a lucrative acting career. You've got to get your gob shut. Could have took the money, Lawrence. You could have took the bloody money, and you didn't. Should have. And I think that what's happened, we have proof now. If they're always asking about evidence. Where's your evidence? What's your medical expertise? You don't need medical expertise for this. What you need is lab brooks. It's risk assessment. And the Prime Minister, his cronies, the snivel servants, Matt Hancock grew up in away in his office. Ferguson seeing his bit of stuff on the side whilst he tested positive and was self-isolating. Dominic Cummings driving to Durham was a risk assessment. They took a risk assessment and decided it was safe enough, especially number 10 staff. They didn't have parties and associate with each other and dance to Agadu and Abba because they were taking a risk because they thought, come on, chums, let's take a risk with our lives and just dance anyway. No, they didn't do that. They did it because they knew it was safe. They knew it was safe enough for them. Yet 67 million people didn't have dinner parties, didn't see the loved ones. We were hugging our grannies through plastic sheeting. There's videos of people hugging their grannies through a plastic sheet while an old woman breaks her heart while she sees a grown up grandson that she's dotted on. She's changed his nappy. She's fed him. She's looked after him, picked him up after school. He's grown into a fine young man and for two years can't see him because these pack of comedians pack of absolute comedians in number 10 and b -b 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 bumbling around blah, blah, blah. where the government let's do something yeah well what we'll do we'll lock down we're being run by a bunch of inept public school boys with very little experience of life apart from in boris's case where he's been having affairs and things we've all done that i'm not judging him i'm not into whether he's a good boy or a bad boy i'm into the fact these laws should never have been passed not one of so them so if you go, um, if, if you say, um, what is it? What's the somebody's razor? Hanlon's razor never ascribed to malice what you can quite easily put down to stupidity. Is it, is it your view that these measures were a result of stupidity or do you think they were malevolent malice, a way of reordering society, using a catastrophe to create uh, a bigger state and more control over people's lives and get them used to this sort of behaviour? I mean, the idea, the whole idea of a lockdown two years ago, three years ago, would be completely untenable. No one would ever have seen that coming. So is it stupidity that caused this, looking at Italy, worrying about the figures or not? Boris didn't want mm. to lock down. Canada, Australia and New Zealand couldn't wait to do it. So there's a different mm. mindset there. Then the unions pressurised Boris. People don't realise this. There was an historical teachers union meeting. 400,000 people tuned in to watch it about how they were going to lock down anyway because they would shut the schools and Boris and the Tories would look callous and uncaring because the unions would do it. 
So Boris caved. I would have had a press conference. I would have told the public what the unions were doing. You wouldn't have got that one past me. Because what's happened now with, with this virus, with this outbreak, every, everybody's having a piece of the pie. You've got the unions and the NHS that are trying to bring the Tory government down. This is my view. The unions and the NHS are seizing the opportunity to make the Tories look bad. The Tories are bad and they're that stupid. They can't see what's going on. You've got genuine people trying to do good who believe in what's gone on. But unfortunately, the figures don't back up the need for what's happened to us, be it through medication or lockdowns. The figures don't stack up. Uh, I am living proof. The fact I haven't accepted a treatment to protect me doesn't mean it will affect you. Treatments that anybody have. I don't get cured from cancer by my neighbour having chemo. She gets cured from cancer by having chemo. It's as simple as that. Anything going into your body is for you. And the rest is hype. The worst offenders in this to me, the worst offenders are the mainstream media who obviously have the school fees to pay and obviously want to keep the big houses down London and they're doing what they're told. They know, you know, Laura, that they know. I know that they know. If I know, they know. I like that. Um, that they should be reporting a whole picture, a story where we can make our own decisions. We're, we're human beings. We're, we're running homes, cars. We've, we've took degrees. We're nurses. We're doctors. We're lawyers. We're scaffolders. We're building houses. We're the backbone of the country. We are the people. And you're, you think we are so inept. You can't let us out our front door for years. They, they rolled out the first batch in January 2021. Was it 2021? And what happened? They then sent all the vulnerable a letter telling them to stay in until the end of March. And then what happened? They had us all staying in till June. There was absolutely never, ever any need for this. And no matter what Professor Ferguson says, this is his fifth cock up in my book. His restrictions changed British farming forever in favor of EU restrictions in favour of EU farmers. Ask a beef farmer, they'll come on your thread, ask anybody who's a beef farmer. My brother-in-law's a beef farmer, so don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. They changed the ropes when Tony Blair was in charge so that it suited the EU. Tony Blair works for globalism. Tony Blair works for the EU. Tony Blair has never stopped working. He might have been out of office, but he's one of the most powerful people. So people may have a question, well, why did the whole world do it? Well, the whole world didn't do what we did. It's a big place, it's the whole world. The Western world did what we did because the Western world governments have been infiltrated and I'll use Tony Blair's own words that he proudly displayed on the Twitter page of his institute. The Tony Blair Institute has embedded itself in governments across the world. That is one of the most important lines of type you will ever read. Embedded means in government, working for and with the government. In Canada, New Zealand, Europe, Britain, Australia. It's, compl it's completely circum it's circumvented the democratic process, hasn't it? Because... Um, it's the same with the climate stuff. It's the same with the lockdown stuff. It, this, this, this was not put to the people. We weren't, as you said, we, we didn't get to offer our own risk assessments and we're going to get the same thing with the climate now. We're not allowed to look at the science. The science is decided on all of these things. Um, are all of these people, when they get together and meet in Davos uh, for the WEF and our good friend Tony Blair, who we must congratulate for getting his Knight of the Garter award yesterday, so thrilled, so thrilled for you you little war criminal who should be in jail um are we are our governments infiltrated with globalists who want a central global government go, governance so that there is a so there is a sort of socialist communist global uh, political movement so there is no alternative there are no floridas and swedens is that what's happening yes the, right. there's two cheeks of the same backside in westminster now the, the, mm. the, this is where you see people if you're a Tory, look away now. I think the Tories would have been a better opposition. And the reason for that, the Tory party is fiercely protective of itself. It's the most successful party in the world and has been for generations, the most successful throughout the world. They will protect themselves first, even before globalism. 
So I believe if it had been a Labour government trying to implement all these restrictions, the Tory party would have fought it and they would have fought it with data and science and they would have fought it hard and a lot of the laws would not have got passed because they simply would have stopped it because their backers would force them to. Unfortunately, the Tory party is entrenched with globalists. I'll tell you who you globalists are. This is my assessment. So this is not libelous. This is my brain. You can't stop me from thinking it yet. Tobias Elwood is a fine one to talk. Matt Hancock. Matt Hancock, the man. His watch when the damage happened, not got the decency to apologise, be it mistaken or intentional. He's not got the decency to apologise. We have no recourse with that man. No recourse at all. I don't want to hear what he's got to say about cryptocurrency. I don't want to hear him interviewed at all because you're not going to get a single thing from that man. He's protected by the system because it's basically, can I say this, no shit sticks. That's how nice. they're going to operate this one. And hopefully we'll all forget, we'll all forget about the nasties because there's a war to fight, a war that could have been stopped. That could, You could have stopped Putin. They could have stopped, NATO could have stopped Putin. But unfortunately, there's a weak president in America. There's a weak president that can't keep his poop in his pants and he's running the free world. And it's, you know, this, the only genuine thing about the war in Ukraine will be the refugees and the deaths from both sides. That will be genuine. The rest... Well, there's also the, there's also the for me, the bit that I, I find really baffling about this is that um, we, we are at risk of a nuclear war. And um, people, you know, I, I remember my parents saying, you know, they remembered the, the Bay of Pigs and they remembered the Cuban Missile Crisis and they remember think, thinking, you know, their parents were genuinely worried when they got home from school that the, the world would be over at some point. But we've got a guy in Russia who runs Russia who's obviously uh, unhinged uh, and we're goading him. And it, it, are, are there chances that, you know, I, I, that bothers me? I'm like, guys, we're... we're facing a potential nuclear war what what why are we doing this what why when we can't secure our own borders are we so interested in securing someone else's that's i find baffling i don't think putin's unhinged <clears throat> i think it makes more sense than listening to justin trudeau and just in Ardern for me um if you notice back in 2016 when president trump was elected everything calmed down. I made videos, I made videos in 2015 and 16, where I held a piece of paper up saying, we don't want war with Putin. We don't want war with Russia. People don't want war, full stop. Now, if I'm making videos like that in 2015, 16, when Obama was in control, and then we have a four year, five year, whatever break it was with Trump in, and Trump, the first, one of the first jobs Trump did was ring Putin up. Trump's a businessman. He's a talker. He's not a fighter. He wants to talk to people. He talked North Korea off a ledge. We've, we've spent decades worrying about North Korea and nuclear missiles. And now the American government, the White House, the Joe Biden administration is trying to get us afraid of Putin when they're jockeying the war. That's how I see it. That's my, that's my honest belief. Because at the end of the day, Putin didn't do anything while pres once President Trump was elected. And if President Trump had been a allowed the second term, this lot would not be happening. Now, if the change of a president means it wouldn't be happening, there's something wrong with your president. There's not something wrong with Russia, because Russia hasn't changed. They've got the same guy. They've had him for years. I wouldn't like to do live in Russia. Do you think it's, um, do, do you think, I mean, the thing that I'm noticing is that the sort of libertarian free marketeer types like uh, Trump uh, aren't really interested in solving other people's problems. They're interested in empowering people to solve their own problems. Uh, but then the hard left wing, like the Biden administration, are so keen to solve someone else's problems ahead of their own that they, they are like Tony Blair and like all these left wing administrations, including George W. Bush, because I think he was quite left leaning, is that they're much keener in starting wars and solving other people's problems. And they are addressing the crisis that they've got on their own land. So America 
America's had over 100,000 uh, deaths from opioid addiction last year. No one talks about it. San Francisco, Los Angeles and other cities in America are complete dumps now, uh, thanks to these left-wing policies. Do you think there's something about the, the, the desire to censor and destroy any form of socially conservative or libertarian thinking um, that, that is, is preventing us from being able to have a balanced discussion. I think it's, that sort of feels like one of the things. Trump, for all, America went from a net exporter of uh, natural gas and energy to nearly $6 a, a, a gallon of, of fuel now, so that their whole supply chain is completely scuppered. And they could do something about it straight away. And we've got the same problem in England. We've got all this, we've got a trillion tons of, a trillion, whatever, whatever they are, a trillion cubic feet of, uh, of, shale gas between beneath our feet that we're importing coal from australia why why aren't we sorting out our own problems and who wh wh why <clears throat> well because the problems to us the solutions to them they want a nation dependent on government a nation that's dependent on the government means that they'll have to be looked after by the government the government will need more money from the central banks this is communism this is communism we've already taught girls that it's okay to have a baby without a partner they think it's liberating. It's just a means of getting control. So the girl has the baby without the husband or the partner, and then she's on benefit, and then she has another one and she gets more benefit. And it's a spiral because as more people see that, that's the route they go down instead of thinking, right, I'll, let's, I'm, I'm going out with Frank and I'm, he's a great guy. We're gonna save up and buy a house and then we're gonna start a family. That's, that's gone, that thinking's gone because people have been cajoled into seeing it as liberating and freedom whilst really what they're doing is, is tying you back in. It did it for me years ago. People thought I'd lost my marbles blogging and going in the streets campaigning for Brexit. You know, my friends and family were like, what? I went, I am, it, it has to be done. Um, so when you look, this phrase will be more poignant now than it's ever been since it was written. In 1952, Jean Monnet wrote in a letter to a co-founder of what was to become the EU, the peoples of Europe should be guided towards a super state without actually realizing why. This can be disguised as having economic benefit and lead to irrevocable federalism. The thing that kicked off in mind, that was one of the the light bulb moments for me. Hang on a minute. Why disguised and why do we have to be led this way? If it, and if it's any good, why would you disguise it? You don't have to disguise something unless it's not right. So I started looking into it. So looking at the EU now, as you see, it's the European arm of the globalist movement. And unfortunately, there's, there's, there's several things in the way of this. And the biggest thing in the way is the family unit. Mum, dad, two kids, that's in the way. That's it, well, we need to get shut of that. So what we need to do is promote not having the family unit, which is have your child anyway. You don't need the dad there. You, you can live off benefit. You can get yourself a council house. So then the family unit becomes more dependent on the state. The state's dependent on the world banks. It just keeps the money rolling. It just keeps the money with the top echelon. I mean, at the end of the day, during the last two years, as businesses and families have been crushed through ill health and lack of earnings, there's been the biggest transfer of wealth from us, the middle class, to the super rich in history. The, their nest egg, your Bill Gates and your uh, Bezos, their nest eggs have gone up by 10 to 20%. And inflation's running way higher than any 6%, way higher than that. Housewives can work that out when they say how much milk is in the supermarket and why now it's gone up. So here we are now, we've had two years of being told we're not fit enough to go out, and yet here I am. I've survived this two years of deathly, deathly troll on the, on the world. I'm here, I'm alive, I've had the virus, I recovered, just like I would have recovered from flu. I'm desperately sorry for people who have died because of it. Um, just like I'm desperately sorry for the people in 2000 and. 18, was it 17 and 18 in December and January in those two months, 65,000 people, 65,000 good souls were killed by flu and the media didn't report it once. We didn't shut anywhere, we didn't stop anything, we just let it roll on. And unfortunately, there seems to be no difference um, 
when I was a kid, we were treated against polio and it seemed to have worked because once you had your sugar cube, you were pretty confident you wouldn't get polio and we didn't because not many people had wheelchairs back then. Very few caught polio and were crippled by it or died. What would we do now if you'd had three or four treatments for polio and still got polio? How would that work? Well, it's it's a cognitive dissonance, isn't it? Because we're being told that, um, you know, the thing that really got me on it was this is a bug. You have an immune system which has been created over uh, tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, and everyone suddenly stopped believing that that works. So the minute you started mentioning natural immunity, everyone was like, no, 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 you've got to have these uh, in, interventions, these medical interventions. And as you, as you say, we see that... Um, Poor old Justin Trudeau, your and my favourite person, has managed to contract it again, despite being a, basically a Canadian pincushion. Um, so, what is the political? What you know? You look at something like the Reform Party. They come out with a very sensible economic plan yesterday, which I've had a look look at, and I think that makes sense. It looks good to me. But they're just not landing with the electorate. So, what is the political solution to this problem against the Uni Party? <sighs> What is the, the the political solution is is for me I've been at it for three years um, the small parties working together in a simplistic fashion so for instance you reclaim and you say Richard to Richard Tice we've got a really good candidate in so and so let's say Hull and mm. Richard says oh no not Hull we've got Mike Hookham. Mike Hookham's been an MEP, he knows the job backwards, he's a, he's a fisherman, you know, he's from the fishing town, ex-military man, we've got him. And you say, all oh, right, well, he seems better than ours. You stand in, we'll stand down. That's all it needs, communication, communication. Mm. It needs people to park their egos, I want to be the big cheese, forget the big cheese. You've never had that problem, Lawrence, which is why I support you, is because you just want to change things. Um, and people to stop being afraid of voting for the lesser parties. What we have to acknowledge is we are in a mess now. This is the mess. This is the mess. And keep voting those two parties back in will continue the mess. You won't touch the Labour strongholds where there's a lot of benefit claimants and a lot of ethnic minorities because they'll vote Labour back in and back in because Labour pandered them to, to get the votes. But the Tory seats... The Tories are the ones that have to wake up to the fact you haven't got a Tory party anymore. You haven't mm. got one. It's finished. The fire isn't burning. It's just smoke and mirrors. There's no Tory party. Even the MPs themselves don't get it. They haven't witnessed what's gone on. The party's been in, in, infiltrated from CCHQ. Since the um, Lib Dems and the Conservatives made a coalition, Sadly, a lot of the Liberals, um, they liked it. They liked being in power. And so they stayed within the Tory party. And so th this business of the Tory party being right wing, no, no, no. There's a section of it, like people like me and members of the Bruges group who are Thatcherites. I'm not a member of any political party. I've never joined one. But I, my political thinking as a businesswoman, a small businesswoman, I don't mean I'm sure, I mean a small business, um, was Thatcherism. That suited me down to the ground. Um, that's gone. Boom, that's dead in the water. They, they fixed that with John Major so they could get the Maastricht Treaty through. Because we have been infiltrated by pro-EU, which is pro-globalism, for decades. Uh, Tony Blair was the best Conservative Prime Minister we ever had, if you think about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Tony Blair yeah. changed politics forever because Tony Blair had the common sense when he was in power to not just be the front man. He wasn't up and down like Boris in a daft art turning up at a bakery and has stood on the settled scaffold and said, hey, chums, I'm... What, and what is it with these politicians with this rolled up sleeve business and tie loosened? I'm sorry, you don't come across anymore as one of the boys when you're, when you're Jeremy Hunt and Matt Hancock with the sleeves rolled up, we're, we're in it together. No, we're not. No, we're not. This is for the cameras. What gets me with people like this, they haven't cottoned on to the fact that something else changed about 10 years ago. Something else changed. They haven't noticed. They haven't noticed. 
it's this thing that I'm talking to you on. And social media, because what's happened, we now, we the public, that had to keep stum for decades, didn't get what we wanted, just droned along to it, oh, another, oh, we didn't get that, we're still in the EU. We've now got a machine that can answer any question you want about mankind and the ability to share all that information with your mates on social media. So we are awake. The public is awake. If you need to look on UK politics and cover, look at the thread. I put a post on yesterday. What do you think is causing the current financial crisis and the cost of living crisis? There must what be 300 answers? comments. And not one has said Putin. Not one has said Russia. They've all said the government. So what they need to, Westminster needs to wake up and realise is we're on to you. you. You can't behave like this any longer. We know what you're up to. So the best thing we can do, it doesn't matter. The other thing with general elections, this is really poignant. Stop thinking you're going to vote for a government. The government always wins. What you're voting for in a general election, if you've had years of an unsuitable government, and we have had years, because don't forget, they lumbered us as a Brexit voting nation. That party lumbered us with Theresa May. Cameron said he'd walk us through Brexit, and he jacked. He didn't name a successor, bad form, and we ended up with a Remainer, Theresa May. And then after Theresa May, we had years of a legal debacle with um, that woman who took the... Government to court, I can't remember. Gina, Gina Miller. Miller. Yeah. Mm. With years of that. And then we get Boris. We think we've got a hero. The lead of vote leave. You know, I've met him. I've talked to the guy. That's what he was supposed to be. And he died in a ditch how many times, dragging, leaving the EU to the way. And I can tell you now quite categorically, there's only one reason Brexit was delayed. And that was for Tory backers to hang on to free movement of cheap labour. Cheap labour, that, that's the reason it was dragged on and on. And it's still not ratified. So if you think you've got a Tory party, I'll remind everyone what they did with lockdowns. I'll remind everyone that the fishing minister didn't even read the fishing agreement of the withdrawal agreement that was drawn up by Europe. Um, Theresa May brought that back with her. She didn't take it out with her. She brought it back with her. And unfortunately... We had a fishing minister that had the stupidity to say on her own Twitter page, I'm slavery, I'm getting excited. Um, mm. She said, well, I didn't have time to read the fishing section because I was busy with the local nativity. Oh, well, get your priorities right, love. Get your priorities right. Here's us. One of the main things, you asked June Mummery, I talked to June Mummery a lot. There's 168 coastal communities that were desperate to get the fishing back. And what's this government just done? It's just issued 17 new fishing licenses to French trawlers. These licenses are 80 to 100,000 pounds each. British fishermen have to pay for, and we gifted them. There you go, bonjour, avez-vous la? We gifted them to French fishermen. How does that even make sense in the face of a Brexit nation? Well, so because we it seems to me that... that... It seems to me that the people in the people in charge don't want Brexit to to reap the benefits of Brexit, as far as I can tell. Because I, I always thought I, I was sort of non-political in that period. I was always sort of cared a bit about politics, but I hadn't been forced to be political. And um, I thought, well, when Brexit happens, it's going to be good because we'll have a different and more positive outlook, and we'll have our own sovereignty back, and it all and the country will look great. So far, it just looks like not only has nobody got a vision. For, for what Britain looks like post-Brexit, but they're actively trying to sort of make it worse for us, almost, as people, as a punishment for voting Brexit, in the same way as America punished, got punished for voting Trump. Forget about letting Labour in. Because what the Tories will be like this now, watching it. Oh, God, she said it. Yes, I have said it. Because you're that bad, you're that bad at government, that even if there is a coalition with the SNP and Labour, it's your fault. It's your fault because the yeah. Tory party up in Scotland are lazy. They, there isn't one. And unfortunately, even if they got in, at least the Tories would have to fight to get back. And there'd still be a lot of MPs because it wouldn't be a close tie. So there'd still be enough. But if you had some new people in there 
that were un unbreakable, that didn't get whipped to vote with the government. You're not voting for a government when you're voting in a general election. You're voting for both sides of the house. So what we need to remember, what we need to create in this country isn't a government, it's an opposition to challenge the yeah. government. That's, that, that's the setup. Nobody's challenging it because they're getting what they want anyway. Keir Starmer might as well sit in the hammock in Jamaica smoking a cigar, watching hula well, dancing. He's, he, he's um, I mean, uh, none of the above is the most popular choice for prime minister at the moment, according to the most recent polling. So, I mean, you go, what is the point in Keir Starmer? But why are that those people that are going none of the above? So they don't like Boris because he's a lying, duplicitous toad who's got into bed with the wrong people. They don't like Keir Starmer because he, he, he's about as enigmatic as a small pebble. And they want any... They, but they won't vote for this, for this mystery, none of the above person. And, and I suppose you're right, the opposition is what one can achieve via little campaigns and small electoral stands. You know, I think that's that's the way to do it. But, I mean, it, it, it beggars me to go, well, we'll spend all this money going and standing somewhere with a good message, strong message of, you know, personal individual responsibility and all the things that the Tories should be doing. We're never going to lock you down again. We respect your bodily autonomy. We don't want your kids being taught that they can be born in the wrong body. All of this stuff that that just for some reason people are too scared to vote for. And I, I'm just I'm just waiting to do it. But I mean, we could we could talk about that all day. Um, what's uh, let's let's um, finish up by talking about our f favourite people at the moment and our least favourite people in the political sphere. We'll play we'll play. Um, it'll be like a game. You, you throw someone at me, and I'll um, and I'll tell you what I think of them, and then I'll do it to you back. <laughs> um. Favourite people, well, this is going to sound corny, obviously you're on my list, Lawrence, because that's how I found out about you, because you were going for it on question time. You're the only reason I watched it a bit longer, um, because it was just such a setup. So you opened your mouth and I thought, oh my God, he actually means it. Um, I, I like anybody who's standing up, even if they like, even if they like, like Richard Tice's party, they're standing up for something, aren't they? They're trying. Mm. They're trying to make a difference. Even if some people say it's controlled opposition, at least it's something. We've got that little to go on. Um, so I really admire people who do that. And, and I think um, I think the people I, <laughs> I don't like, um, my number one slot, and Annie will never be... Um, unseated is Matt Hancock. Matt yeah. the Rat Hancock, number one slot for me. Um, he's never made, I mean, he came on Dan Wharton. He couldn't get a more polite bloke for an interview, could you, Dan Wharton on GB News? And mm. he's so thick skinned, like a sociopath, he saw it as a chance to promote his book. Uh, no, we don't. Book. It, uh, um, Matt Hancock wrote a book about how he coped in lockdown. I'm hoping to see it on Amazon for 2p shortly. Um, he, he thought he was going to promote his book. He actually didn't think people were sitting down that night to watch that program, to see him get grilled. I don't think there's any point talking to him. To me, he's an unreformable criminal. In my mind, that's what he is. He's unreformable. So push him in the backwater. And every time he rears his ugly head, every time he boils to the top of the shit pot, Put him back down because he's just been on a podcast talking about crypto and he's so far off the mark. Unbelievable. Uh, that went down pretty badly, that. didn't it? That, 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 that podcast, it, um, it seemed to have gone down pretty badly. It's like you can't, what, this, what I, this is the bit that frustrates me more than anything in the whole world, is these WhatsApp groups that people keep inviting you to. Some of them are good, some of them less good. But you get invited to this WhatsApp group and you've got two, I have to mute them most of the time, it, two years of people going, the man's a criminal, it's appalling, how dare they? It's, the government is awful, it's just terrible. And then two years later, he's on a podcast with the very same people and you're just like, hang on a minute. And you're not even talking about lockdowns. You're asking well, a man about crypto. My best mate knows more about crypto than Hancock does. It's, um, well, I, I think the reason we're failing... Uh, at the moment, I think we're, we're, I think culturally we're winning. I do. I think people are fed up. I think parents are getting it fed up of what's happening, what their kids are being taught. I think culturally we can win. Politically, I think it's it's very difficult. But one of the main problems here is this: too many chefs, 
not enough too many sh what is it too many chiefs not enough indians if that's racist i apologize because you know everything's racist nowadays but we've got all of these people that want to be saviors and save everything and it's like no don't as you say let's work in small little areas about things let's find the cultural issues and and highlight them to the to the government and see what happens but at the moment they've just got us all they've got us exactly where they want us which is everyone in disagreement forming little pacts with each other over the same issue so we so everyone's doing the same job it's like having 10 10 car salesmen in a car showroom with five cars in it yeah but the public ultimately are in control here the public because at the yeah. end of the day the public didn't need telling to email theresa may that they wouldn't accept the dementia tax we didn't need telling them did we they didn't need me saying yeah. anything we crashed the server there was that many emails to number 10 the phone lines were hot their mp's phone lines were hot and basically, they dropped it out the manifesto because they knew they couldn't get away with it. So we are to blame. I am one of the few people that actually tells you what's going on, says X, Y, and then, and then nearly every post, don't forget to email your MP, tell your MP. People will wax lyrical on social media. I do myself, but I also send at least 50 emails every day. I have three telephones. And at night, I ring MPs when I know they've gone home. I don't speak to them. I don't want their opinion, like I don't want Matt Hancock's opinion on anything. I don't want their opinion. I'm not interested in them. I'm interested in them knowing ours. Because if you're an MP and you walk in your office that morning and you've got 55 messages from people, short messages, polite messages saying, unfortunately, you've lost my support. I cannot, I cannot vote for anyone who condones lockdown in any way, shape or form or whatever your message is. And he's also got 150 emails, even if he hasn't read them. We've got to, you've got to re realise this isn't about long-winded emails that he's going to or she's going to read. This is about his, his aide or her aide saying to them, good morning, sir, you've got 250 emails today saying they won't vote for you if you don't, um, if you support lockdown. And there's about 30 people on the phone, sir, so left a similar message. The selfish, the self-centered, all they care about is getting back in. They're going to think, oh, and if that figure outweighs the figure of people saying, oh, please lock us down because I got fat when I got older and I've got COPD and I've got this and I've got that. If that figure outweighs that figure, they'll listen to the one that's got the most clout. That's what it's about. It's not about, it's not about the email. It's about the numbers. It's about the volume of emails. So we are in control. You did it. The people did it for the dementia tax, but they haven't done it for lockdown. Furlough. Well, was we can, yeah. Well, we, we, we. I think. I think one of the actual one of the bonuses of, of Boris limping on is that um, if he tried lockdown again on us, it would be met with very um, cyni cynical responses. I would imagine. But um, we have to. Yeah. We have to wrap it up. So, All right. So we. Was, so. So you no, know, you with, go. You. You. With Jeremy Hunt. With Jeremy Hunt, he actually yeah, said so he, he actually said that people should be taken away from the families and quarantined if if they tested positive. That's criminal, how far criminal. we've gone by China. I know it, it, I, it's absolutely criminal. That I, I think we we have what you do, which is great, and what UK Politics Uncovered does, which is great, is it offers people, and what we try to do here, is it offers people a slightly different narrative from the one that's shoveled out by Piers Morgan and you know your other mainstream media shills. So all I can say, because you do this out of the goodness of your own heart, and you don't get paid, you haven't monetized your page or any of that sort of stuff. What I can say is, I think long may that continue, and may more people follow your example, because the more people that we wake up, the better. June, you're yeah. a ledge. Thank you, Lawrence.